All right, guys. Last week, I didn't take a video of the food I ate. This week, I got tacos again at the same place in Bakersfield off Taft Highway, 119 and 5 Freeway on the Chevron parking lot. Here it is, carne asada tacos. Oh, they package it nice too, huh? Usually it comes in just aluminum foil, but this is legit. Here we go. Here we go, wow. Gonna dig into this. Got the green sauce and the red sauce. All right, and the, I got a horchata as well. I hope they do well because uh, it's not like they're sponsoring me or anything, but like, you know, if they're around, I get to enjoy tacos every time I pass through Bakersfield. So definitely worth it for me. <laughs> What's going on, my people? I got a new audio device here. Um, my daughter told me to get this because my phone is freaking out and it is having issues with inconsistent sound. It would get loud and then quiet again back and forth. So, you know, I needed to get the mic. Um, yeah, so this week has been pretty much more of the same. They've been giving us pretty much one load a day, you know, uh, for whatever reason, uh, one load a day. So on uh, Thursday, which is my third day, it was the third leg of my trip. I went up north. And then on Friday, my fourth leg, I was coming back south. And I was worried that the planners would probably give me a, uh, a short run or uh, give me something that, um, you know, was, was not a long distance. So I went ahead and reached out on the message board and told them I need something long distance, please. So if I go one more leg, long distance, and return back, I can probably do it in a day and a half. So uh, that's what I was pushing for. I'm driving, and all of a sudden, you know, my tablet shows that I, I got a new uh, assignment. I pull over, I check it out. And basically, they gave me a uh, assignment to shut down. <laughs> At this point, I only work three and a half days. So you go figure. I don't, you know, I don't know. You know, they want me to go back to uh, Ontario and shut down. And um, I was like, uh, what, what are they doing? Like, I don't, I don't understand what they're doing. You know, they're basically, uh, I don't, I, I guess they wanted us to take a day off early for Independence Day. I don't know, because we're probably going to work Independence Day. So I, well, I'm planning to work Independence Day. So, uh, but they shut me down. <laughs> anyway, so from that point on, I reached out to the backroom staff and uh, they basically told me that uh, they'll see what they can do. It almost seems like uh, the people that are planning, they're not listening to the feedback that they're getting from the DTLs. And basically, because we at Schneider, we don't know um, who the planners are. Everything we say to the DTLs, uh, the driver team leaders, they are the ones pretty much representing us or being our voice to the planners. So that communication has to be there. But for whatever reason, it feels like there's kind of like a wall, like where communication is coming one way, but it's not going the other way. And uh, our voices aren't being heard. My my whole thing is, is, you know, somebody decided that they wanted to make sure that appointments are on time, which is important. And so uh, they went ahead and dumbed it down for everybody, four loads a week maximum, and make sure nobody has any missteps. And I get it, you know, that's the cautious route, right? It's not the most efficient route for people like me and uh, other people I know that drive and want to drive long distance and, and get as many miles as we can in a, in a week. Like I'm talking about 10 to 11 11 hours of driving a day. Uh, right now, one of the days I had six hours and 17 minutes of driving. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's starting to become like a joke. I mean, realistically, like I, I need to drive and I need to make money. I'm out of my house, uh, you know, and uh, regional driver, you know, five, six days out of the house. And, uh, you know, we're, we're making sacrifices here to do what we can to make the money and do what we can to move freight for the company. But you need to listen to the driver. You need to hear what the drivers are saying. So I know there's your average driver, you know, that's not going to drive that many miles. And then you also have your slow drivers for whatever reason, whether they're lazy or they're being extra cautious, they have a hard time even doing those four loads. And then you've got people like me and the p other people I know when I talk to them, um, yeah, we want to do six plus loads a week and um, long distance loads, uh, at least at the minimum. You know, um, back when I first started the count and uh, I was getting, I guess, uh, supported, uh, I was trying to hit 2,800 miles in a week, you know, as a dedicated regional guy in our account. Now I'm lucky if I break 2,000 each week. And so um, it just doesn't make sense, you know doesn't make sense at all. Anyway, um, I don't want to sit here and rant about stuff like that, but uh, if, if they had like a, a better understanding of individual drivers, you know, make notations on the drivers and say, oh, this guy likes to drive long distance. Oh, this is an average driver. Oh, this guy is a slow driver, cautious, but slow. Or this guy is a lazy driver. He's probably on his way out. You know, like having notations on the drivers and working with their strengths and weaknesses. You know, that's when you're, when you're working with a team of people, that's probably the smart thing to do. You know, you know, who's reliable, you know, who's going to get there fast, you know, who's who's going to turn around and want to go again. Uh, you know who's going to be sitting there, you know, or going into weird 
locations and having detours and doing personal errands and stuff, you know, you make those notations, you know, and you know that uh, who to rely on and who not to rely on. So that's just basically it. But that's that's very basic. And so I hope that eventually after, I guess the main concern is trying to get everything on time, the appointment times. So hopefully they hammer that out. They can fine tune it so they can be a little bit more sophisticated in the way that they go about assigning loads to the drivers. And I'm hoping that we progress that way. You know, you never know. You know, we're, we're being challenged every day to uh, basically up our game, which is good. You know, like we should strive to be um, the best drivers we can on time, you know, understanding all the nuances of the company and, and striving for that perfection. You know, they, they push us for that all the time. And if in, in terms of like where we fuel, um, how much uh, idle time we have and all that stuff is like their concern and they convey that to us. And uh, eventually, I hope that they are listening more and more to the driver's messages back to them because uh, right now there's a lot of frustrated drivers and a lot of drivers want to leave because they're not being heard basically and or they're not being supported or loved. I think in any job, you want to be recognized, you want to be heard and you want to be supported and loved, you know, and feel like that somebody cares about you. You know, you're, you're not just a number, you're not just a, you know, driver ID number, blah, blah, blah. And your metrics is this and you're just an average driver, you know, like you're a stinky driver, you know, whatever. And uh, that's how they label you. That That's how they categorize you. I mean, hopefully it's something more than that. And uh, they know you and they know what you need. They know how you are, you know, and the longer you retain the employees, the more you get to know them because they're there a long time, you know, do your best to keep the good drivers because a lot of mega carriers, they have a tendency to lose a lot of good drivers. I'm not expecting some magic fix or anything like that. I just, just as we drivers are upping our game, you know, maybe the backroom staff can up their game and, you know, just listen and have good communication. You know, I think the system itself needs to be tweaked a little bit. It needs to be uh, fine tuned basically. And uh, hopefully we get there soon, you know. Um, so after I uh, let the back room know that I was, uh, I wanted to drive more. Um, they gave me a, a, a load. They said, whatever you're taking down now, stop where you're at. We're going to have a, uh, a relay point and uh, I'm going to swap trailers with another driver because he needs to get to um, San Leandro, uh, Northern California by a certain time and he can't make it. I had a little more time than he did. So they asked me, would I be willing to do it? And I looked at my clock and I was like 220 miles out and <laughs> I was like, Ooh, that's going to be tight. You know, I don't know. Um, and this place that I was taking the load to it's kind of like a hit or miss they're notorious for long live unloads and um i said all right let's let's do it you know because i wanted the miles i you know beggars can't be choosers you know if they shut me down then it's re realistically three and a half days of driving and i'm done and it's like the the worst week i'm gonna have you know and so so i said okay give me the work i'll help you guys out i'll make sure that this gets up there on time so i get there and i do the normal check-in and everything's taking forever you know and by the time they're ready to give me a dock you know um i had like about 50 minutes an hour left i went into the uh warehouse and and I talked to the guy, I said, hey, listen, I'm really tight on my time. You know, can you, can you help me out? And uh, he said, you know what? When you get a dock number, it's going to take you two to three hours. So I suggest that you go ahead and uh, call your company and uh, set a new appointment. And, you know, after driving all that, doing the swap, driving all, all that way up, you know, it was kind of like a anticlimactic end. And, you know, I want to finish the load for the company. I don't want to just sit there and, you know, dump another uh, problem. So I went ahead and I... Um, tried calling the company to see what we can do, but my time's running out, you know, my 14-hour uh, clock is running out for the day. I called and this was 7 p.m. Friday night on, in California time. So the, the number of people working after hours is <laughs> very limited. And so uh, the amount of people that would normally support you aren't there. And even then when they're busy, you know, it's hard to get a hold of somebody. So at that point in time, I couldn't get a hold of anybody. And then I was waiting for a call back from them and nothing was happening. So I pleaded with the guy and the guy gave me a, you know, let me see what I can do kind of look. He assigned a forklift driver that got me, it, literally I parked it. And uh, when they started unloading me, she was super fast. I was, I was blown away how fast, because usually when I'm there, like I, I had times when I was there for seven hours, you know, uh, but uh, she got me in and out of there. And then I turned the corner and shut down for the night. I ba barely had enough time to do my post trip and, and shut down. So everything ended up working out. It was like a miracle. <laughs> it's just, you know, and then uh, after I shut down about a... <laughs> hour or two later, I got a call from, you know, overnight services and they said, Hey, what's the problem? How are you doing? You know? And I was like, Oh, you know, everything worked out, you know? So, but that's how busy they are back there. They probably need to hire some more people during the weekend nights. Cause that that's the worst time to have a problem, you know? So, you know, I want to talk about being content and staying content, even though you're not getting what you expect. And that's hard because when the expectations aren't met, it's hard to be, you know, content. And then trying to keep things positive and being happy despite all the BS we deal with. Now, I mean, like if you try to do that, like, are you basically living a lie, you know, trying to be positive when things are crumbling around you, you know? Um, no, I don't think you're living a lie. I, I think we're fighting a fight, you know, um, fighting a fight probably within ourselves, our attitude, our uh, capacity to uh, handle things. 
and also conveying the positive message and the right messages to the people around us. So the whole thing is, is you don't want your quality of life to dip because of incompetent or selfish people that we're dealing with. And we come across this day in and day out, you know, right? Um, and I realized something, the more I complain, the more I diminish my capacity to handle things or to do what I need to do. So hear me out. The more I complain, the more my capacity, my level to handle things or do things goes down. So we're basically fighting to have a positive, relentless approach to keep an enlarged capacity. So for us to be able to deal with a lot and for us not to get wigged out. You know, in life, in society, we grow up thinking the person who's angry or the person who uh, throws attitude are the people who are with power, you know? It's actually when they resort to that kind of uh, action or reaction, that's a sign of weakness because they don't have the capacity to handle it. So they've got to come out like, you know, they're going to attack you if you don't listen to them, you know? And um, the actual real sign of strength is having a large capacity, being able to handle whatever pretty much comes your way without wigging out. It's like, I don't know how many of you guys are parents, but uh, when you're a parent and you see your child and the child wigs out over something you know minor, you know it's minor, but to them it's a big deal. But you have the capacity to see that situation for what it is. You know, it's kind of like that. We have to be able to see the situation in a different light and know that it's not the end of the world. Because, but when you've got so much energy going towards one objective and then things don't go your way or you hit hurdles, you know that that opposition, that frustration coming your way is going to bring you down hard. You know, it's basically like you're running and somebody puts a hand on your face and says, nope, <laughs> you know, boom, right? Um, and we face a lot of that as drivers. Now, when we get into adverse situations, obviously, it's healthy for us to blow off that steam. You know, if we need to talk to somebody, if we need to stop and call somebody and just let it out, let it out. But it's when it's prolonged. When you're upset for a long period of time, it will hold you back from what you need to do. It will make you react in ways that you don't want to react, whether you get into fight mode or whether you, you, you shut down, you know, fight or flight, right? When you start complaining, ranting, complaining, ranting, after a while, psychologically, you, you're in a mode where you're basically saying, I'm upset. And when you're upset, your capacity has basically shrunk. And so at that point, you don't feel like doing anything. You're upset. And sometimes when you're at low points like that, when you're upset, you're at this point of like, I'm angry, you know? And then even the simplest of chores, you don't want to do. And then a lot of us, we will get angry and we'll probably say or do things that we, we're going to regret later. Most people will get into a, I don't care type of mode. And a lot of people compromise their morals and values at this point. So, I mean, for people that deal with truck drivers, you know, um, try to understand them more. You know, you don't have to kiss kiss the driver's butt or anything like that, but just see what their needs are and try to meet their needs. You know, um, this guy who hooked me up uh, at the warehouse, uh, he did me a solid, you know, I'm so appreciative of him. You know, he was, he was a rock star for me that day. You know, um, I mean, at the end of the day though, is it a big deal? Like I, I'm late with that appointment because they gave me a bogus time for me to deliver it. You know, it was, it was a challenging time. And if I didn't make it, it, was, it would have been okay because they rejected me for that appointment, you know, to be able to do it on time, right? And did they do something above and beyond? No, they unloaded me in two, you know, I got there at six and I think I was done at eight something, you know? And so it was like two hours, but normally they take a long time. So, you know, they did do me a favor, but it's what they're supposed to do, right? <laughs> so what I want to say is that treat the drivers well, you know, and then we as drivers, we need to make sure that when we see ourselves getting frustrated or um, our capacity is diminishing, we need to make sure that we can still be professional, still be polite, courteous, and uh, still put in our A game as much as possible. And if we need to blow off steam, you know, pull over, you know, don't drive like that. Because this is another thing too, is when we're at that low point, that's when we make the most mistakes. You know, when we're stressed out, our head's foggy and um, anxiety level's really high. That's when we're going to make a lot of mistakes on the road. And so I want to encourage you guys, if you guys have uh, issues. Sometimes it's okay to take a 10 minute break, pull over, call your wife, call your significant other, whoever, and just kind of say, Hey, you know what? I'm having a crummy time, <laughs> you know? And another thing too, is make sure when you're at those low points, uh, you're careful not to pass that on, pass that energy on to the people you love at home or, uh, your family or friends, you know, sometimes like it's toxic and sometimes it's contagious, you know? So, um, try to keep that negative energy to a minimum because the last thing people want to do that the people that love you that care about you is just hear you rant 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 you know non-stop without actually you know fixing anything it's just everything's impossible at that point you know when you need to blow off the steam blow off the steam but then you know get back in balance quickly especially before you get on the road for this week i want to encourage everybody to just keep a high standard you know up your game um you know we, we as drivers we're going to have to do everything that the company is asking us because you know this is our job and uh and basically if we want to stay at our job we do what we are asked to do and uh and you don't get terminated right 
But at the same time, um, you know, with a positive attitude, because if, if this isn't the place we need to be, we need to move on. But if this is the place we want to be at, give it 100% all the time, um, despite all the hurdles, despite all the obstacles. And, and for anybody else uh, listening that's not a driver, but that may be working in, a, in the back room or something, you know, up your game. You know, up your game. Don't just, you know, do the blame game where we point fingers and look at numbers and, and there's no relationship. There's no understanding of who's who and who the drivers are and how they are, you know, up your game, you know. We need to up our game and everybody needs to up their game, you know, because uh, this is how we're going to be successful. If we do the bare minimum, we'll get by probably, you know, our company being the company it is, we're big, we'll get by, but we're not going to be successful. And we need to up the game to be successful. And that translates well for everybody because hopefully the company rewards us if we're successful. So, yeah. So that's what I got for you guys this week. Uh, until next week, take care of yourself. Be safe. God bless you. Peace. I will catch you next time. Cheers.
Matt Byrne. Welcome to the life. It's a comedy ride. Keep your spirit strong and let the road be your guide. I'm a trucker for life. Trucker, 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 I'm a trucker for life.